it's Micah. Welcome to our Thursday reaction series where we are looking at all the recent Hot 100 number ones. Uh, the way this works is if we have a new Hot 100 number one, I will uh, react to that video and if or song. And if we don't, I will go back into 2023 and react to the most recent number one that I have not already reacted to. I've been teasing uh, a 2023 reaction for uh, a pair of uh, very controversial songs. I've been teasing it for some time now, but we keep having a new number one single each week, so I have to keep up. And once again this week, we have a new number one. This week, it's Teddy Swim's Lose Control. Uh, I've seen this name and this song on the charts for what seems like forever. I guess it would be around 32 weeks because that's how long it took to get to number one. And uh, the Hot 100 is a weird animal right now. It seems evenly divided among songs that are flash in the pan number ones based on album release cycles or slow burn songs like this one, which take a really long time to get to number one uh, or linger around. And uh, the lingerers, they're almost like loiterers in the top 10 are is another weird phenomenon songs will shoot up the charts and then they'll just sort of float around in the top portion of the chart for a very very long time and so i noticed that out of this week's top 10 there are six songs that i've already reacted to as number one singles as far back as the middle of last year they just hang out forever in the top 10 even after they've already peaked at number one so the Hot 100 is an interesting uh, interesting chart. So this week, I finally get to hear Loose Control. I can't believe the song has been bubbling and bubbling and, and simmering and getting more and more popular, and I still haven't heard it. So this will be my first time listening to it. I saw the video that has the most views is a live version, which I believe has 70 million views. And uh, to the extent that this is different than the recorded version, uh, you can let me know in the comments. Uh, the few comments that I've read on this video was that this is a terrific live performance. So I'm excited both to hear the live performance and how he knocks it out of the park. And I'm also eager to just hear the song in general because I haven't heard it before. Uh, so without further ado, this is Teddy Swims with the number one song on the Hot 100, Lose Control. <laughs> I'm falling 
was so good. It even got a mirror up here. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting exactly, but I was not expecting that. That was that was a preternaturally soulful performance, and it was so clean that it had me questioning whether it was a live vocal. I'm sure it was, but if so, he has excellent control over his vocal instrument. That was a clean, very, very clean live performance. The guitar solo, the synchronization of everybody in the band jamming along together, uh, the sound mixing, everything on that was just spot on. That was incredible. Um, I'm really interested to know what Teddy's other stuff sounds like. I'm, I almost can't imagine that all of his songs are this intense because I can see myself getting completely worn out listening to an entire album of songs this, you know, this intense. But in a four minute dose, it's just like a, it's like a tonic. It's so good and so bracing and uh, just a direct hit of emotion um, with some very visceral imagery in the lyrics as well. I'd have to like see the lyrics printed out to really dig into them further. Uh, it, it does strike me as more of a mood song than a narrative song where he's describing a feeling that he's having uh, rather than there being a clear trajectory of of what's going on in this relationship that makes him feel this way at this moment, but it's just enough that he's in this moment, in, in you know, in the context of the song and expressing how he feels about it. Um, vocally, I came up with a couple of c comparisons that I hope aren't too far off base. For me, he's, his voice seemed like a mix of Joe Cocker and Terrence Trent Darby. Joe Cocker because of the soulfulness, the scraggliness, like visually, the, the nonverbals, the, the, the way that he moves, it, it was giving me that, those Joe Cocker vibes uh, and, the, and the raspiness, did I say that, the raspiness of his voice. And then, uh, the, the, and then there's that through line of that pleading, very high, strong, anxious uh, undertone, which reminded me very much of of Terrence Trent Darby's uh, the way his the way Terrence Trent Darby's voice sound and I'm sorry I know that Terrence Trent Darby now has uh, has been going by a different name for many many years now I just never know if I'm pronouncing it correctly and I um, and so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna caption it with his with Terrence Trent Darby's real name I keep saying it and it's not his name that that's those were the um, those are the two names that popped in my mind and I think both of those are extreme compliments. Uh, but my question is, where did this guy come from and where does he go from here? Is this going to be another rolling in the deep? Like it feels kind of like one of those type of moments where it's a gripping song that doesn't seem super specific to any genre and it's now a big number one hit. Uh, do we have the, the dawn of like a new Mega star with with this guy, or is this just like is this an Adele moment, or is this a Daniel Powder moment? I feel like it could go either way, but yeah, it's it's great to hear people who, um, you know, break with convention. Some people I think veer too far on the side of criticizing music trends just because they happen to be not in tune with them. Um, but on the other hand, it's good to see someone who's operating outside of that mainstream pop sound, it, the, the hit factory, vocal manipulation, dance beats, that kind of stuff. It's good to see someone who's clearly not bothering with that and is going for something a little more straightforward and um, sonically familiar for people who you know grew up in the... 70s, 80s, uh, maybe even the 90s, when there was a when 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 music didn't have to be wasn't customarily electronic. Elect electronic music ex has existed for a very long time, even back in the 60s. You can find it in Be the Beatles records where they were experimenting with electronic things. But 
it's kind of become the default over the past 20 years. And so it's good to hear something that's different. It sounds refreshing in its own way, even though you could, could call it a throwback. I've enjoyed a lot of the songs I've listened to recently, just in different ways. Uh, so I was almost about to like say, this is the best song I've heard in a really long time. But then I thought, thinking back just to last week, Ariana Grande's number one last week, uh, really, it, it was the opposite in terms of texture. It's a very light touch kind of song, but it's just as emotional in its own way. Uh, so, um, but there's no need to really compare. Uh, both songs can be great. All these songs can be great. And this one is definitely great. All right. Until next week, um, when we'll see if we get to this, we get back into 2023 and I get this video out of my system that I don't really want to post, but I feel compelled to. Uh, or if we have a, yet another new number one. I mean, Teddy Swims took 32 weeks to get to the top. Maybe he'll stick around for a while. Maybe I can have a chance to go listen to some, some other number ones from last year. But we'll see what happens next week. Until then, please hit the like button if you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined. And please continue to make music better.